Hi Virgo, welcome to your December Love Taroscope. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I start your reading, I want to call in some good energy and create some sacred space around this reading. So we have a new uh, full moon in Gemini and a new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn at the end of the month. Uh, full moon in Gemini is on December 11th, 12th, depending on where you live. Um, it's either the night of the 11th or the early morning of the 12th. And then we have a full, a new moon solar eclipse, which can bring some surprises. It's got Jupiter con conjunct the new moon, and then it's trining Uranus. So um, there could be some surprising new beginnings at the end of the month. Let's see what the cards say. Uh, about love and relationships for Virgo. What does Virgo need to know about love and relationship for the month of December 2019? What is coming up for Virgo in terms of love and relationships for December 2019? What does um, what does Virgo need to know? The Wheel of Fortune, the High Priestess, the Death card. The Seven of Cups, the Seven of Pentacles, the Page of Swords, the Four of Pentacles, the Empress, the Page of Pentacles, and the King of Pentacles. Okay. So right here, you have the Wheel of Fortune. So things are changing. This represents unexpected, a change in fortune, unexpected opportunity. There are things going on behind the scenes with the High Priestess. So you might have to use your intuition. Trust your intuition. This is about listening to that divine voice, the gui the, your inner guidance. Um... It could be that you're connecting with someone who's very spiritual, very intuitive. Um, I feel like you're kind of in transition right now because you have the death card in the past. So something, a cycle has ended. The death is about clearing out the old, um, ending of one cycle so that a new cycle, a new and better cycle can begin. So you're going and you're in that, tra I feel like you've had an ending. Something has ended, something has completed. And now you're kind of in, tra you're transitioning into, you haven't achieved the new beginning just yet, but you're moving toward that. You're kind of in the limbo state right now. Um, like you're, you're kind of like the wheel is turning and you're kind of in the, in this um, state of flux. Because sevens are about transition. So you have the Seven of Cups in the recent past. This is a card of having several options and being stuck in the choices. So there, it could be that um, you have different relationship opportunities or several options within a relationship and you're trying to make a decision. This is a card about being stuck in the choices and you're not sure what direction to go in. Um, so you're having to take time out to listen to that inner voice this is the voice of guidance, the voice of the divine. And it could be that you're keeping your plans secret right now because you're not sure exactly what you want to do or where you want to go. But So it's like a time of gestation where you're just uh, fermenting. <laughs> you're thinking about, you know, where do I want to go from here now that I've ended this one cycle and I'm clearing out space ready for spring, ready for the new cycle to be birthed, to begin. Um, so you're kind of in the planning stage right now, especially with the Seven of Pentacles coming up here. It's about planting seeds. 
and waiting to see what's going to happen. So maybe you've had a couple of um, opportunities pop up and you're kind of playing this wait and see kind of uh, thing. You know, let's see what develops. Um, and, you know, you're being very uh, critical or discriminating this time around because you have the Page of Swords here. This is a card of looking into things deeply, um, checking things out. Like you're not just jumping into something uh, without giving it a lot of thought. You're really checking into th the Page of Swords is about looking carefully into something. Sometimes it can mean spying <laughs> or gossip. You know, um, but I think in this case, it's it's you're really being more discriminating or discerning. Um, so if there's someone that you're interested in, you're not just going after them. You're kind of checking them out first and finding out as much as you can about the person before you approach them. Um, and it could be if it's not you doing that, there could be someone in your life doing that too, checking you out. Um, to make sure that you're everything you appear to be, that there's no hidden secrets. Now, if you're involved in a relationship, you have the Empress here in your environment. This is a card of home and family uh, and a card of abundance. So if you're involved in a relationship, this person thinks very highly of you and wants to have some stability in the relationship, wants to create a home and family and, you know, an abundant uh, life together. You've got the Four of Pentacles here, though, so I feel that you could be a little bit, a little bit trying to control the situation. You have to kind of let go and go with the flow. Um, this is a card of holding on too tightly, either to money or to love. You know, where you're like afraid to give your love. You, it's like I'm wanting, you're like you're wanting the other person to take the risk. Um, the, but this is a card that says if you want, you have to give to receive. So you can't hold on to your love and then expect someone to come and give you their love. You know, you have to go out on that limb. You have to approach someone. You have to be willing to be open. And I think you are because you have this page of pentacles here in your wish fulfillment sector. This is the card of the student, so you could be uh, inter thinking about learning new skills, um, but it's also about being open. So I feel like if you've ended a relationship, this this message is, it may not be for everyone, but if you've ended a relationship and or ended some cycle in your life and you're getting, you know, like kind of transitioning to a new situation and not sure which you know, where you want to go, and you're checking all these options, you are open to the new with this card. This is a card of someone who's like, yeah, okay, what's next, right? Um, but you definitely want something that's stable. So here's this King of Pentacles. This could be someone that you're interested in. Um, if it's a relationship, it's someone who's very down-to-earth, very stable, Someone who cares very much about home and family. It could be a little bit conservative, maybe a little bit traditional. Maybe the, not the most exciting person you've ever been with, but very dependable and stable. And that's, I think, what you're looking for after this death experience. Like after you've been through uh, major change, you want some stability now in your life. You want to feel like you have a home. Uh, you want to feel like someone has your back, that someone is there for you. Um, so you're being kind of discriminating because I feel like some of you might have gone through a difficult relationship transition. And so you're being really cautious about where you give your love or who you get involved with. You want to know more about them or you want to check them out, make sure they're uh, the right kind of person, that they're not just some flighty person or fly-by-night person. You want to make sure that they're sincere, that they're stable, that they're everything they say they are. And here's this king. I think um, if this is a person that you're getting involved with, this person can be good for you because I think you're both on the same page. You have the same element. Um, it could also be your energy. Like maybe you're wanting to um, start your own business or get more, you know, be more independent, create your own security. 
but definitely you're looking for security and love in December. Um, and things are changing because you have the Wheel of Fortune here. So there are going to be some opportunities coming up. What you don't want to do is don't try to control the outcome. Let it kind of go with the flow. Don't be too rigid about how it has to happen. Um, you know, you might be thinking, well, um, this is what I'm looking for, and it's got to be like this, A, B, and C. And this energy is kind of unpredictable, so it may not fall exactly in the order that you want it to fall, or it may not happen exactly like you're envisioning it. So you have to let go of that, you know, preconceived plan and be open to the unexpected. Be open to, you know, the um, synchronicities or the spontaneity of it. Um, but I think there's going to be an opportunity. And don't and you have to be a little bit, like, don't be too cautious where you're, like, you know, tossing everybody away because they're not living up to your exact um, ideal. So you have to be a little bit flexible in December. But you could be connecting with someone who could be very stable and very good for you. And it, it could be that you, that it could come out of the blue. These opportunities can just be unexpected. Um, so you may feel at the beginning of the month, oh, nothing's happening, everything's, you know, same old, same old. Uh, and then there could be some surprises. So let's see what the um, astrology has to say for Virgo. So you have the full moon happening in your 10th house of status, career, life path. And the, so the moon is there, and the sun is in the fourth house, your fourth house of home. So you've had this work-life balance issue, you know. You might have been spending a lot of uh, time working on a career goal, and that's coming to completion at this full moon. Um, so you're either finishing up a project or finishing up work or achieving a goal. Or sometimes it can mean that you've decided to, okay, this, is, this cycle is complete, now I'm, trying, I'm ready to move to the next one. So either you're ending a relationship or ending something or completing something. At the full moon, the full moon also shines a light on things. So you're going to be seeing things more clearly. Uh, anything that was hidden um, would be coming to light around the full moon. And you have a lot of, you have like the stellium of planets in your fifth house. Saturn, Venus, Pluto, and now Jupiter is moving in. Um, and probably even Mercury will be there. But anyway, um, all this stuff in the fifth house, <laughs> there's definitely going to be some kind of new romance coming or a new opportunity. If it's not a new relationship, um, because the fifth house rules children, so there could be a birth with this Empress card here. For some of you, you could be having a birth in the family. For some, it could be a birth of a creative project you like a new form of self-expression that you're getting involved in. For some, it could be a new romance um, that's going to bring some fun into your life and passion because you have Venus conjunct Pluto in the fifth house. But Saturn is there too. So Saturn could be, you could feel like, well, I'm working too hard. I don't have time for love. You know, I don't have time. Or you could be attracting someone who has Saturnine qualities and Venusian qualities. So it could be someone who's very hardworking very stable, very, you know, a little bit conservative, a little bit more um, reserved. But Venus is there, so they're attractive. <laughs> um, they could, you could be connecting with someone in some type of creative project. And there's a passion there. You're, you're following your passion in December. Uh, you have an opportunity to do that. Mars is in your third house, and it's trining Neptune in the seventh. So you could meet someone, you need to get out and about in December because you could meet someone while you're running around the neighborhood. Uh, the third house represents your local environment and the seventh house represents committed partnerships, either in business or relationships. So that with Neptune there, you could have, you could meet the soulmate with Neptune in the seventh. Um, and there isn't anything squaring Neptune right now. So... Usually Neptune could go either way. It could be like you could meet this great soulmate or it could be just an illusion, you know, just glamour because Neptune can rule illusion, deception, charm, 
but it also can re rule spirituality, music, art, creativity. So if you're, you're either meeting someone that you can be really creative with, that feels like a soulmate, you're really connecting with someone on a deep level, not just physical, it would be more spirit, like a spiritual connection. Um, and you might be doing a lot of things together, you know, be, being very active together. Jupiter's in your fifth house too. That brings luck and, and opportunity. And Jupiter is trining Uranus in the ninth house. So um, for some of you, you might decide to travel and explore other cultures or go back to school and learn because you have this page of pentacles here. That's the student card. Uh, you might decide, like, I need more training or I want to take a course, you know, something that I've always wanted to learn uh, to enhance my skills in some way. So you might be thinking about signing up for some educational project. Um, or you could be meeting someone. If you're meeting someone, uh, it could be someone that's from a different culture than you or someone who challenges your belief system in some way, expands your mind in some way. So you could be very different in what you believe and what you think. Um, and this person could either be from, you could have a long distance relationship because the ninth house rules foreign travel. Or you could have a, you know you could have an opportunity if you're doing some type of creative project you're reaching people around the globe. Jupiter's bringing you that opportunity to reach out and connect with people from around the world or from different cultures. So um, there could be a lot of uh, opportunities for romance in December. And then we get to the new solar moon eclipse. The solar new moon eclipse, I mean. Um, that's on the, that's in Capricorn on the 26th of December. That's in your fifth house. And that is conjunct Jupiter. So, like, everything comes to a head with this eclipse. It's like, okay, it's do or die. Um, uh, you have powerful energy for a new beginning in creative self-expression or a new romance. And it's trining Uranus. So, it's going to be connected with either publishing or long distance travel or foreign countries or education, higher education. You could be meeting someone who's very educated, who explore, who uh, introduces you to different um, information, different types of spirituality or different ways of learning. Um, this could be a very lucky new beginning for you. Um, and it could possibly transform your life in some way because Pluto is also involved and Saturn's there. So Saturn, you know, a lot of people think Saturn, I mean, they focus on the dark side of Saturn. Um, but Saturn's your sister sign. Saturn, yeah, it means commitment. It means hard work. It means sometimes hardship or loneliness, you know, while you're doing all the work by yourself. <laughs> but it also means great rewards. It, it also means... Um, creating something solid and stable that's going to last for a long time. It's not a flash in the pan energy. It's more of a, I'm you know, going to work hard and I'm going to achieve this goal and it's going to be something significant and it's going to last. So you could have, if you're not in a relationship, you could create, you could have a romantic encounter that has potential to last uh, and bring emotional healing to you where you can, because. Uh, Chiron's in the 8th house in Aries. And it's moving direct this month on the 13th. So if you have any healing to do around um, intimacy or um, abundance on, or support from others, um, you can have that opportunity. You can have a new opportunity. And it's, it could be that you heal through creative self-expression. That you're doing, you're embarking on this new project. Maybe you're working with someone, or you're doing something creative, and you have an opportunity to to have a relationship as a result of that. Um, but whatever it is, Jupiter is going to bring abundance through creative self-expression to some kind of art project, or even um, it could be art, music, creative writing, dance, um, music. What else? film, photography, movies, anything creative, anything in the creative field. Um, and the fifth house is also going to give you uh, attention. So you're going to be seen, you know, you're going to get to shine your gifts, to show your gifts. 
Um, it's a new opportunity, maybe even to travel, because the ninth house is involved. So um, be prepared. Like Uranus, you really don't know, because Jupiter's trying Uranus. This new moon is trying Uranus, and this is an eclipse, so it's major, and it's going to last for six months till the next eclipse. Um, so anything can happen with Uranus. You can't really predict what will happen, only that it will be unexpected. So like the last thing you would ever think of, and then suddenly here it is. Here's this opportunity, out of the blue. That's what this Wheel of Fortune is saying. And it's going to give you that um, opportunity to show your gifts to the world and to um, reach a greater audience or a greater, you know, to expand beyond your immediate environment. So things look good for you, Virgo. Um, I think you're going to have a nice month in September, in December, <laughs> listen to me, in December. You're going to have a good, uh, a good Christmas present with this new moon eclipse. I think we all are because it's Jupiter's there. Jupiter is the benevolent king, you know, of abundance and opportunity and optimism. Um, so it'll be an unexpected blessing. So be on guard for that. Just wait for that. And don't look, you know, don't be too critical about it. Like you might be like a little bit um, cynical, you know, think because of things you've had in the past. You might be thinking, well, I don't know, this is too good to be true. You know, um, I don't trust it. So just be a little bit flexible and let this opportunity fly in. See what flies in around this time. You might be surprised and it might bring you this beautiful empress energy of family, nurturing, feeling loved, feeling nurtured, creativity, birth, abundance. That's, that's going to be in your environment, in your future. So I hope you've enjoyed this reading, Virgo. And if you'd like to have a private reading, just click on the link in the description box and we can get you on the schedule. In the meantime, I want to say thank you to everyone who has um, liked and subscribed and supported this channel. Thank you for those who have ordered readings. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're enjoying the readings and the videos. And um, I want to just say have a happy holiday to everyone, whether you're celebrating solstice, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you're celebrating in December. It's a time of um, to give thanks and to welcome the light back into the world and to spread love and light. And um, I wish you an abundant December with many happy surprises. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.